And I think probably one of the most dramatic changes that I've seen thus far is this beautiful paver patio. And I want you to take us back to the beginning. Tell me what I would need to know to install one of these at my own home. Well, this is a little unusual situation because there's an existing slab underneath there. Okay, now in this situation, you had what was a somewhat unsightly concrete slab. And I noticed also that, that it, had, it had settled some, it was not level. But this foundation that we're standing on right now uh, looks really, really good. So how were you able to take that slab and, and level this off to where you know it looks good? Well, first we started by building this kind of a, a fake wall right here by uh, taking some of the edging pavers that we used around the yard and we faced the slab uh, with those pavers. Uh, then on top of that, we added this cap and made sure the cap was completely level. And then we had a, a, a flat surface that we could drag our board across uh, to get the, the pavers perfectly level. Joel, I noticed that you guys went with these beautiful earth tone pavers and it's, it's a bit of a departure from the traditional red brick pavers. What influenced your decision here? Well, we like these old castle pavers because they've got kind of a natural stone look. Uh, and, uh, you know, the top of them is textured and uh, the color would match the decks quite nicely. You know, it almost looks like it almost looks like real stone. I do like that natural aspect. We do have a lot of earth tones, all the plants that we're moving in. These are going to blend in nicely. Now, there, there are some gaps between each paver, and, and I would assume if we left it like this, there may be some, you know, some cross movement as people walked on them. How are you able to lock them into place? Well, what our next step's going to be is we're going to take polymeric sand and sweep it into the joints. Uh, then we hit it with the plate compactor uh, and then get it wet, uh, and then the polymeric sand kind of dries like concrete. Very interesting. Okay, so the plate compactor is just going to vibrate so that you don't have any gaps in the polymeric sand? That's correct, yes. Excellent. So once that's all set up, we're going to have a very nice solid patio. It already looks fantastic, and, and of course I can't wait to see it when it's completely done. You guys have done a great job. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. The existing mulch material they had on this site were these these rocks or pebbles, and I know you're wanting to move to a wood mulch. Right. What's your reasoning behind that? Right. Eric, there's a lot of reasons. One is it sure looks a lot better, and it's a lot easier on your back to put it in. Um, it, it's just going to hold the moisture better. Rock tends to heat up quite a bit, which dries out the plant roots, and it tends to burn the foliage that touches those rocks. So wood chip mulch really is a better way to go. Well, and from year to year, wood chip mulch also adds organic material to the soil, oh, which, yeah. which rocks don't. Right. So there's a lot of advantages there. Right. I do want to comment also on this beautiful edging. What we had here before was, was steel edging, and you've moved to this really nice concrete right. edging. The owners, Jeff and Jeannie, have dogs. And metal edgers tend to get really sharp on the top edge, and dogs tend to cut their feet on those. Mm. The, the metal edger also tends to pull out during freeze-thaw cycles, and there's nothing you can do about that. No number of stakes will keep those in mm. place. This is really a very smart edger because it will stay in place because it's heavy. It's a concrete segmental piece that allows you to place it flush with the grass on this side and mulch on this side. The weight of these will keep them in place. Yeah, they look great and they're very, very practical. They are, sure are. I like them.